If you hire an expert vendor, does an expert vendor decrease their scope or increase their scope? Okay, there's the risk monitor on the side. Because I have only two hands, that's not going to stay there. But if the risk goes up, is that a good thing for an expert? No. Experts have no risk. Risk has to go down. Okay, so this expert vendor is increasing their scope. What does the risk meter say? How many say it goes up? Raise your hand. How many say it goes down? Raise your hand. Wait a minute. The more somebody promises you, the risk always goes up. The less they promise you, the more likely they can do exactly what they're giving you. Does that make sense? Okay, so experts always decrease their risk. So if you go out on an RFP and you ask all the vendors, to submit a scope on what they're going to do to meet your requirements. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <coughs> okay, so think about this now. The vendors are all reading what the requirements are. Okay, and they see that you're asking them for a scope description. And they know that you're going to take the scope description back to some kind of rating committee and the more someone promises, does the score for that vendor go up or down? Goes up. So now they're thinking, oh, that's the name of the game. And they start doing what with their scope proposal? Oh, they'll line up the sun, the planets, and the moon. <laughs> During the day or the night, it doesn't make a difference. And they'll deliver it to you anytime you ask them. You give them a 10 rating, you bring them in, you tell your boss, oh my goodness, we got an expert vendor. Now you have to sit down with that vendor and you tell him, we identified you as the best value vendor. Now we want to sit down and know exactly how you're going to do this. What problem does this vendor now have? And they can't. So they're going to try to what? minimize it now. And you can actually see this thing shrinking. Then it makes you a little nervous. Why is the vendor changing their scope? Well, whose fault is it that the vendor's changing their scope? The it's the buyer. It's the buyer and the user. It's not the, it doesn't have anything to do with the vendor. They told the vendors, right, this is what we're going to do. The vendor said, this is what we have to do. So they all do it. Then the buyer makes a decision and picks the one with the biggest scope. And now the vendor's going, oh, Oh, got to bring it back down. Now, as they bring it back down, do they try to form a relationship with the buyer and the client? What do you think? Oh, yes. So now the relationship becomes very important. And they, do they do more of this or less of this? Oh, a lot of that. And they become friends. And the whole time, the risk meter is saying what? <sighs> Does that make sense? You never ask the vendor what he's going to propose. Because you can guess what's going to come back. We only hire expertise. And after we hire the expert, that shows us dominantly that they're an expert. Then we ask the expert, how are you going to do it from beginning to end? Does that make sense? Ah, it's, it's a trap. It's like that you know, monkey trap. Man. They can't get out of that. Now, do we want a vendor to do more upfront or less upfront in competing for our project? OK, think about it. Let's say we have four vendors competing. All four vendors do more work. How many vendors get the job? Who compensates the other three? Their other customers. <laughs> Is this win-win or win-lose? Win-win-lose. I guarantee you, you use any win-lose practice, who is going to really end up paying for this at the end? The buyer. You cannot use a win-lose practice.